All right, it's time for another demo of NoSQL Math, the automated NoSQL database injection and ponage tool um, by me, Russell Butterini, uh, and a lot of other folks who give me great feedback. Definitely appreciate all the support, feedback in the community, questions, comments. It's all been added. We try anytime there's a feature request, we try to add it in. Those of you who follow me on Twitter know about 20 minutes ago, released version 0 0.3 of NoSQL Map. Really excited about that version. And I want to do a video today to cover some of the new features that were included in both 0 0.2 and 0 0.3. I don't have a good video showing uh, those features and demoing them. So uh, I'd really like to take some time to do that today. As you can see, I'm on the project homepage here. You can find the GitHub repository, all the documentation, release notes at www.nosqlmap.net. And hope you guys find the information useful. And again, feel free to send me any questions, comments you might have. Um, the project mailbox is nosqlmap at gmail.com. My Twitter handle is at tcstool, H-A-X-0-R. And just, again, feel free to reach out to me with anything you might have. So let's take a look at some of these new features. You see I did a little uh, prep work before the demo. And so first thing you'll notice, there's a large, obnoxious ASCII art banner, excuse me, like any good security tool has. But there's m many more rich features than that. So first thing I'd like to point out is there's a new option on the main menu, option four, scan for anonymous MongoDB access. Okay, those you guys may know that MongoDB doesn't require any authentication model by default. It's just you connect and you're in and you have access to everything. So on a pen test, it's probably useful, or if you're scanning the internet, it might be useful to find those default uh, MongoDB database instances. So I give you two options. You can scan a subnet for that default access, or you can load IPs from a file. Let's scan a subnet. I'm going to type in 10.100.165.89/29, which is my small VM network I've constructed on this laptop. And off we go. So you see we've already found a few MongoDB instances, found three of them to be precise in my, uh, in my environment that have anonymous access. I have the option to actually send these straight as targets into NoSQL map. So I'm actually going to take the first one, 10.100.165.90. And we'll go ahead and drop into our options. You see that IP has already been set for us. One thing I'd like to point out too that was added in version 0.3, we can now attack MongoDB instances that aren't running on the default port of 27017. My friend Ming Chao uh, suggested that uh, I add uh, the ability to change the port. Apparently there's some hosted instances there they change the default port in an attempt for security through security, I guess. I don't know. But uh, they're findable. And uh, as you can see, I've now offered or set the option rather for you to change that in NoSQL map. So this looks good. Let's go ahead and set my local IP, which is 10.100.165.92. And the other thing I'd point out is that in versions, now that we're in the options menu, in version 0 0.2, there was a feature added to parse requests from Burp. So if you save a request to a file in Burp, NoSQL map can open it up, parse out the host, parse out the request method, the request body, the options, parameters, what have you, and automatically populate those in NoSQL map. It's a feature I love in SQL map, and so I really wanted to port it over to my tool as well. And uh, it works great as far as I know, but if you guys run into something, just let me know. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it for the options menu and some of the new things in here, at least as far as the network attacks. So let's go into the DB access attack since we've located a anonymous MongoDB server. Does the database server need credentials? We know it doesn't because the scanner found it. And we see the ports open, and we see also the web manager that's open. Uh, we test for RESTful API. That's not a new feature, but we'll skip that for now. And so I'll show you a couple of new features here that came in version 0 0.2. We're now extracting the database users and password hashes out. So in our scenario, we didn't authenticate, so we might even run into a database where authentication has been disabled or we have authenticated through some kind of stolen password and we have DBA rights and we need one to extract other users to see if passwords are reused on the network. MongoDB uses a very weak encryption algorithm for passwords. It's uh, MD5 and I think it's the username, colon, mongo, colon, and then the password and it's encrypted once with MD5. It's easy enough to reverse. So I'll show you we can actually crack the hash pretty easily. I've already got a dictionary file with the correct passwords on here for the purposes of this demo, but Obviously, we want to use any other dictionary file you might have. 
Uh, so it's called track the hash, yeah, pass list. And as you can see, we found admin with a password, a password. Not a very strong password. There's another user we can crack, but I think we've proved the point, so I'll skip that one for now. Uh, check for gridfs. This is a feature that was added in version 0.2 which is gridfs is a distributed file system which is inherent to the database uh, in MongoDB and so we can test for it, we can enumerate which files are in it, so yeah let's check that out and as you can see we've actually found a few files in there, we found a Debian ISO which is just something I dropped in there for the purposes of this demo and the database user files and um, stealing databases still works the same way, you can still clone, you still have to have your own MongoDB instance, so I'm going to skip that for now but uh, it works, and go back and check out some of my previous demos if you're interested in how that works. And I'm a, I've also explained getting a shell in my other demos. And so we'll skip those features for now. So that kind of wraps up the new features in the um, in the DB access attacks. And I'd like to move on to the web app attacks now. So post requests, thanks to popular demand, have now been implemented in NoSQL maps. So I'm going to kind of show you how this works and how you you enter them. It's not terribly straightforward, but it's what I've got for now. Um, and I'm actually going to use. I've got the apps actually written as as both a get and post request uh, apps. So I'm going to use this as sort of my template. Um, the way in NoSQL Map we enter the post request data is a comma separated list. So you have your parameter value, your parameter name rather, comma your value, comma your parameter name, comma your value. So it's not great, but it works, at least for the purposes of, of uh, injection. It will get better over time, I promise. <laughs> so, uh, and you can also bring in post requests from Burp, uh, which is very helpful. So just to show you how that works, I'm going to go ahead and set the HTTP request method send request as a post and it specifies the format paste it in and just to prove out it works I'm actually going to use a different demo for another one of my apps but just to prove out it works and I, I actually need to set more options don't I um, you can see no SQL map was fussing at me because I didn't set the options so to show you how that works or that it works rather we'll take the same app written using post and populate our options so 10.100.165.91 we set the app path and we simply set slash post slash order data dot php and I've skipped back to finder inadvertently so let me set that and go back to the main menu and web app attacks and as you can see we're doing basically the same thing we did with get requests traditionally uh, only now we have post requests so let's inject the order search parameter uh, random string size of six none of this is new and uh, let me point out something too here as you can see the output is greatly optimized you know, we had big long sentences showing you everything that was happening wasn't happening in the app before and I'll show you in the options menu there's actually an option for verbose output now. That was a change that was made in 0 0.3. You can turn on the old output, which would show you the deltas between the request sizes, or you can have the simplified output by default, which shows you the request worked or it didn't work. Um, and so, yeah, so I'm going to skip timing-based tests for now. There's, but you see we actually use post requests. And what I've done is I've actually dumped out the requests that worked into uh, the Python uses dictionaries for post requests, at least the way I've written it, and I've just dumped out the raw output of, or the raw contents of those dictionaries, rather. And so you can see what worked, what didn't work. So that's actually a beta feature. I'm not 100% happy with the way it works right now, and there's some tweaking that needs to be done, but it does work for the most part for our purposes. So I'm going to show you one of the features I'm really proud of now, and this came out in the 0 0.3 release of NoSQL Map which is actually password cracking and data extraction through a web application. So we have this web app which is back-ended by a 0. Uh, I'm sorry, a NoSQL or a MongoDB. I'm having trouble talking today. 
2.2 database. And so let's see what we can do with that uh, using injection. So I'm going to copy out the features here. I'm going to set the options. I'm going to set the HTTP request method as git. I'm going to change the app path to this path. And let's go back to main menu. So same process as before. We'll take eight characters this time in the baseline size. And we'll use user search. Let's inject that parameter. As you can see, we have this optimized output again. Uh, and I'm going to skip timing-based tests again because they're not relevant to this demo. They were demoed in a previous video if you want to see those. Basically blind injection. And we see we did get a successful where injection as a string escape. And so skip that. And based on the types of injections that works, NoSQL map now in version 0 0.3 will detect this is less than 2.4, it's greater than 2.4. And so we're going to use some exploits that work for less than 2.4 where we can touch the DB objects to figure out information about the database, like the database name, the users, and the password hashes. So let's start brute forcing the database info. Sure. And as you can see, we calculate the database name length first. We got a length of 11 characters. Figured out the backend database name for this is app user data. I'm not going to get too much into the secret sauce of how this works in this video. Hopefully I can be presenting that at, uh, I'll be presenting at B-Sides Nashville in this May. Uh, and I've submitted for DEF CON and planning on submitting for DerbyCon. If you guys hopefully will see me at one of those three places talking and uh, hope to catch up with you there. But uh, again, yeah, we extracted out the database name through the web app. And now we want to extract out the database users and password hashes through the web app. So we'll say, yeah, let's do that. We found two users in the database. And while we're sitting here, basically what's happening is we're making a series of requests. Uh, again, I don't want to get too much of the secret sauce of how this works, but essentially we have a baseline. And we're trying to figure out uh, if what we got back when we do a particular injection matches the baseline or not. Uh, and, and we're testing essentially character by character. If something equals an A, return baseline. If not, do, and then doing some logic, they match. It's very easy to do this in NoSQL map because we're using JavaScript, which has all those great string operations it can conduct. So as you see, we've already, through the web app, we've got the uh, username admin. We've got a hash. And these are the same things we saw earlier since the backend database is the same as the one we targeted in the network attacks. And the second one should be coming along shortly. As you see, we found two users. We got two users, two password hashes, correct recovered hashes. Yeah, why not? We already did it once, but we'll do it again. Let's correct the admin hash, pass list, admin password. There you go. We now have the database credentials through the web application. So I'm, I'm pretty proud of that. Uh, it's, I think it's cool. It's um, you know, definitely something I don't think people have explored too much uh, in where queries in NoSQL. So yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. There's a few uh, interface tweaks. There's a few um, new features. And um, definitely go to nosqlmap.net with any you know, questions you have. If you're interested in the release notes, if you're interested in contributing code, I would love to have some more contributors on GitHub. And thanks for watching this video. Again, email me noSQLmap at gmail.com or at TCS Tool HAX0R on Twitter. Uh, thanks again, guys, and uh, hope you enjoyed it.